So this is the neighborhood I grew up in, right in Ferguson. A friend of mine was actually shot in his driveway right there. You put drugs in the communities, put guns in the communities, you put disease in the communities, put poor food in the communities. All these things are designed to shorten your life expectancy. It's by design. It is not accidental that this is what's in the hood and this is what's over there. There's actually an active hand in making sure that we are living like this. It's all about control, money, and survival to them. Your death is not an expense to them. It's an expense to you. They're trying to make money from us, even if it's at the expense of killing us. You just die slow. Your family just watches you die. The alcohol industry, fast food industries, tobacco industries target communities of color. Your health is not their main priority. They're trying to keep you sick. We are in a state of emergency when it comes to our health. Keeping people sick is very lucrative. Now you want pills. Now you want dialysis. Now you want medicine. You go into the hospital on a regular to see your doctor. Everybody's getting paid except you. Big pharma and pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars off of all of us. As long as they can make that dollar, they don't care if you live or die. It's something about being here that's making black people sick. Everybody's getting paid, except you. You hurt me. There are more dangerous and harmful chemicals and products made for women of color. It absolutely is a crisis. They don't make a dime if you're healthy. It's kind of like the dope gang. It is the dope gang. It's just a bigger gangster, the mob boss. You look at the hidden hand, you see that government is feeding the crisis. We're fed wrong knowledge, decided all the wrong food. It's about money over people's health. If you can control a population's access to food, you can control the person. Only about 8% of African Americans even live in communities that have a grocery store in them. Because the deep root problem is the food. Because poor diets kill more brothers than pistols. You know, we fighting for our lives. That's like Michael Vick's pit bulls. As black men. We're dying off so quickly in so many ways. It's here, pocketed in our communities. We don't want a healthy population. That is injustice, plain and simple. The powers that be are making that money at the top. They trying to kill us. All right, guys. So uh, welcome back to another episode of The Vegan Lives. Uh, in case you guys are tuning in for the first time, uh, this is actually a set of interviews of my fellow activists, uh, from all walks of life, uh, specifically in the vegan community, of course. And uh, we are kicking off round two. Uh, this is uh, something that started in March. And uh, I'm obviously uh, doing a round two because of the fact that we are still in quarantine. Much like my guest today, we could imagine, or at least we thought we would be out of the woods, but we're still in the woods and very much so. So I guess it's time to kick off round two. I am so happy that uh, my our boy John Lewis, aka Badass Vegan, is going to be our first guest uh, today. John, thank you so much for joining me, man. I know that you have so much going on in your neck of the woods, and uh, for you to take a time out of your busy schedule and join me on this uh, uh, vegan live, I definitely appreciate it, man. How are you doing? I'm good, man. And you know, we we family, man. So of course, I was gonna make it happy. We just gotta work out the schedule, but. Uh... I'm 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 amazing, man. Just uh, just grinding one day at a time, and and you know we're about eighty per, uh, almost ninety percent done with the film. Uh, probably got to make one one trip to L.A. Um, to conduct some interviews there, and then after that, you know, uh, we're, we're we're submitting to Sundance. So we literally are like interview 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 on like the 27th and then like edit 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 and then submit it on the second so like it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be it's gonna be a rush to the clock you know what i'm saying but uh but loving it man it, it, it seems like a powerful film of course it's mine so i'm gonna say that but yeah no no i hear you yeah but um you know let the family see it they were like I think my family was so wild that it almost was an insult. I was like, well, what did you expect? <laughs> they were like, wow, that was good. I was like, well, what did you expect? <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, happy, man. Real happy. Well, um, I, you know, I hate to have to do this to you and uh, in an interview as well. I'm sure you're sick and tired of interviews and you should probably take a break from it. So, I, you know, it goes without saying I appreciate you seeing, uh, being here with me. Um, so. As, as you as you'd expect, that's gonna be probably the focal point of my um, interview here. I, I'm so ecstatic. I saw the uh, 
the trailer for it and it, it looks so suspenseful in the way you intertwine so many um, social aspects of uh, modern day society. I think it's going to be a brilliant film. Um, and ov obviously we're, we're buddies off camera too, so I'm kind of biased, but hey, here we are. And uh, you know, it's, I'm not one to uh, cover the sky with our hand here. It looks really good. So my first question, I guess, would be, how did this idea of they are trying to kill us film actually take place? Like where did it all start in your head and maybe what idea triggered it? Man, you know, it, it honestly, I had to say, it's probably started years ago, to be honest. Um, I wanted to do a documentary probably like 2008, but it wasn't time for that. I, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't studied enough in film myself. Like I didn't go to school for film, but I still, I study a lot. I'm always learning more and more and more. Um, and I didn't have the right story base yet. Uh, and then as time went on, uh, Keegan and I have been friends for a while. Keegan Kuhl, my, my co-director that made What the Hell. So for anybody watching this, this is the follow-up film to What the Hell. We were at an event and it was so interesting because the event was just dead. Not like the events me and you went to, like in, in Puerto Rico, like this was just dead, you know, like, and he came over, he's like, hey bro, uh, I want to talk to you real fast. Can you leave the booth? I'm, I looked around, I was like, there's nobody here, let's go. Go to this booth. He's like, man, I really want to work with you on the film. If you if you're down, I was like, yeah. He was like, I just want to reach more people, but I don't know how. And I was like, well, whatever we do, we have to reach out to people of color. It has to be focused on people of color. And he was like, but how do we do that? He said, I'm down, but how do we do that? I was like, hip hop. I was like, if you use hip hop as the backdrop, everybody listens to hip hop, whether it's reggaeton, whether it's you know down south, whether it's oh, whatever right. it is. You know, it, and hip hop is there. And, and I always tell people this, I say, if you don't think hip hop is the most influential genre in the world, if you close your eyes, you can imagine a bunch of six foot white guys on ice skates with Jay-Z in the background. And you just describe the hockey league. Like it's everywhere, it yeah. literally everywhere. So that's how I came about. And I, and I wanted to make sure that I, I came out with a film that actually uncovered but help people uh, i wanted to be solution based too i didn't want to just show people this problem and then you know after they found out the problem they were like well what do we do now um i want to i want to provide people with a solution you know what what steps to take next okay and uh, actually um and i i may be uh stepping out of my boundary here but but maybe maybe without giving too much away right um what as a, as a perhaps an African American male, as a, as a vegan, what do you think are some of those possible solutions that your movie could actually pinpoint, like maybe narrow down and, and place that? Then, well, a lot of it is is looking at the industries that are making trillions of dollars off of the backs of sick black and brown people. Um, if you look at that alone, you know, just giving them solution of actually looking more towards a plant-based uh, way of eating, you know, without giving away too much, but in, in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. It's, it's showing all these diseases, all these causes, all this money that's made off of it. It's just very easy to see, but we, we go into detail. Like I said, yeah, like you said, we don't, don't want to give away too much. Right, right, okay. But we, we do dive into the connection between like pharmaceutical and fast food industries, you know, hospitals, government collusion. It's so many things that are right there. And the crazy thing was, you know, I turned into like this private investigator doing this film. And, it, you know, you, as a vegan for so many years, you think you know so much. And you just, the rabbit holes, it gets bigger and bigger. You're like, wait a minute, now this, and then one thing I really wanted to make sure I did with this film is I wanted to be all about facts, all about science, all about history. Like, I didn't want it to be something where somebody was like, oh, well, smoking cigarettes is not the same as eggs. You know, like what happened with what the hell? You know, like, yeah, I don't want that to even come across. Like I wanted it to be factual, science-based, history-based, if you don't want to hear it, that's different, but it's there. Okay. And let me ask you this. I like facts just as much as the next guy. Were, were, did you did you take that duty on? Like, were, were you the one fact checking and researching and all of that? Or did you have, did you assemble a team to do that for you? Both, it was both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was while I'm fact checking, we actually had a team fact checking. And then like, of course they run it by us when they find the facts as well. So it's just, 
it, it like I said, man, it, it it ended up being like, oh, I'm gonna go down this lane, and then it just opened up, and you're right. like, oh, oh shit, <laughs> like okay. this is real. I hear it. Yeah, I, I'm actually very excited for that same reason because you, at least I, I gathered from the trailer that you chose to intertwine so many avenues, as you say it of current modern society, whether you're a majority, minority, uh, whether you're living in a, in a nice neighborhood, in the projects, like I gathered so much information from just like what, a two minute trailer? Yeah. And that's what got me excited. And number one, and number two, I want to ask that question because I know that like many other documentaries, and I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you, you, you're not gonna uh, be surprised by the fact, but they're probably gonna dissect it and they're probably gonna fact check the crap out of it. So I wanted to make sure that you go on record and saying, hey, I got the facts, whether you like them or not, they don't care about your opinions, they don't care about your feelings. This is it right here, whether you like it or not, learn to like it, yeah? Our big bang in the movie is going to basically fuck people up. That's That was our big thing was like, I want people to be so mad and so overwhelmed by watching this that they're tired. Like they're, they're, they're getting hit by one fact after another fact after another fact after another fact. We we dive into history too, because you can't get here without showing the history of this path of how we got here. Uh, and I think, you know, I just made a post today about something that happened in, in 1942, you know, about the YMCA uh, having these camps where people could go and basically uh, throw baseballs or stuff at black people. Like, this is 1942. This wasn't even 80 years ago, you know? So showing how those people are still alive, you know? And I, and I say this all the time, when I, I'm against racism, not white people. I say it all the time. I, I love white people. I, I love everybody. Yeah. I have nothing against white people. I have something against racist. And right. when you look at what's going on a lot of times within these industries and these groups, sometimes, and even these companies, a lot of times the people that are in charge of these organizations, they didn't start this racist movement, but they're not doing anything to change it either. You know, the, the pharmaceutical industry is a $1.3 trillion industry. If, let's just say, I'm not saying that medication is not needed because that, that would just be false. We know that medication is needed. But there are a lot of situations where a lifestyle change could avoid those medications. So let's think about that. If it's a $1.3 trillion industry, if only 10% of the people that were on medication that could just change their lifestyle and get off of it, if they did that, the whole industry would implode. Because if you do the math, 10% of $1.3 trillion is $130 billion. They don't want they don't want a healthy you know society I know. they don't want that yeah i know it's uh and it's a valid point I, I have a bone to pick with a lot of uh you know the medical industry i do have a lot of uh medical uh doctor friends i do have a very uh, small amount of plant-based holistic nutritionally sound uh doctors who sometimes vent to me as as well as vice versa in the sense that they preach plants and not pills Right. Whereas 97% of doctors would rather just write you up a prescription and keep you as a client, knowing that you'll be back for another and another and another. And so that's a visual cycle that I'm actually very excited. Um, I think you're going to tackle it. I'm hoping and crossing my fingers, right? I don't want you to say it. I don't want you to say it, bro. Exactly, exactly. I see that in the, in the movie. So I'm kind of excited about that. All right. So let's go ahead and pivot to something you mentioned. Um, in preparation of this interview, I went ahead and I came across an, an article posted in the Washington Post, January 2020, that actually said, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but for our viewers, it said, the African American community is the fastest growing vegan community with the most rise in the entire in vegan movement. Mm -hmm. As a member of both, to what do you think we can we can attribute that i would definitely say the current conditions uh with what's going on what even though that was january i think people were starting to see a lot more of people in their family dying prematurely 
And we all, I, I think we all have that situation where we have that uncle that was only 50 years old or somebody that was only 40, a cousin, a brother, a sister, which they died in their 30s and 40s and they're having heart attacks and, you know, heart conditions and, you know, these types of cancers that are directly related to what we ingest. And I think people are really just starting to see like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me, and I'm, I've never said that veganism was 100%, you know, fail-proof plan that will never happen. But if you tell me I can increase my, my chances by 70%, shit, <laughs> like 70%. If you do the math, a lot of stuff is coming after you. Seventy percent is a lot. Okay. And 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 I think that's what people are seeing. They're they're literally seeing like, why would I keep doing this? And people are mad, and they're starting to see how what we talk about the industries, the government, all these things that they put in our food, you know, that's just legal. It is it's crazy. And I and I and I from people that I've talked to, I know that's what the main factor is: is that they're just tired of seeing people that they love pass away okay prematurely and they don't want to be next okay so so basically what you're telling me is that you believe that since a family member lot was lost and since it hits home really close to home that's kind of like the light bulb that goes off in their head and yeah, yeah we, we have to remember that you know i i'm vegan for so many reasons whether it's human rights, animal rights, saving the earth, you know, social justice issues, all kinds of things. But we have to remember, you know, cause sometimes us as vegans will be like, well, unless you go for the animals, you didn't go for the right reasons. Like, no, the animal doesn't care why you're not eating him or her, as long as you're not eating them. They, they're not sitting there like, wait a minute, you didn't eat me cause you don't love me? Well, that's just bad, you know, like- You wanted to lose weight? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't care. So one thing we have to do sometimes, we have to understand that we have to appeal to the people that we're trying to change. And, and a lot of times, I see this all the time when people have conversations about veganism. Say a vegan's talking to somebody that's actually interested in veganism, and the person interested says, well, you know, I want to go for health reasons. And the vegan goes, well, you know, all these animals are dying too. They're not active listening. They're not appealing to the person. We can hit them with the animal aspect later but let's get them with what they're offering right now and that's what we have to do is that a lot of humans are going for health reasons once they're in the door we can lock the door behind them and show them everything but let's get them in the door first and i think that's what's happening is a lot of people are doing it for health reasons and then once they get in now they start to see the social justice issues the the animal rights issues the ecosystem the government, how they want to do all these things to you. So I, let's get them in and then show them everything. And that's kind of like what the film is about. We're meeting them where they are. And then if they're at home in front of a TV, hey, I got them for two hours probably, let's go. I'm going to show you everything. So basically hook them and then expose them to the realities they have been, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, covered through or lied to, okay. I get it. I totally get it. Um, I, for one, you you probably know this by now. I started for health reasons. I, I my life literally was hanging in the in the balance, and it wasn't until I, I made the switch that I was like, you know, the, the light shined on me, and and I happen to now be all, all in for the animals. So I'm an ethical vegan. Like I took that that exit, and I'm now an ethical vegan. And so, um, using that, I guess, as a transition. How, how do you see veganism as a whole, like in, in general terms in 2020 compared to maybe when you got started or maybe when Moby got started? Um, right. how, how, do you, how do you see modern day veganism? Modern day veganism, it, it still has its hiccups. I think that's just gonna be, with anything over two people, it's just gonna happen. And there's apparently more than two people within the movement. So you're gonna have difference of opinions, but I do believe that it's growing. And I do believe that people are starting to understand that it's it's a wider base than just animals. Animals is a focal point, but it also are a lot of things that trickle into that, that same bucket. You know, for instance, I, I see a lot of times where vegans will say, you know, it's all about the animals. 
we shouldn't have to speak up for humans, but it's like, well, you're missing a big part because if humans didn't march for rights, you wouldn't be able to march for the animals. So those people that use their civil rights and spoke up for social justice, they're the reason why you can stand in front of a meat factory and protest. So you have to take a, in all the aspects and look at everything, the ecosystem. Every, I believe that it's all one package. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I do believe that people are getting better, but I do believe we need to stop like shaming somebody because they're not the same vegan that they are, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally get that. And it actually hits home with me because, you know, I, like I said, you, you, you know, uh, you probably still consider yourself a, a health and nutrition based vegan as opposed to me. I consider myself an ethical vegan it really doesn't matter. I, I'm so sick and tired of seeing the friendly fire between, uh, uh, you know, the ethical vegan and the environmental vegan. It's bad enough that we're actually fighting 99.9% .9 of, of humanity, but then we have to tack on each other saying my vegan, uh, my veganism is superior to fine. another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's crazy. It's it, crazy. It, like, and I, it's funny, I see it all the time as well. Like, I, you know, you, you'll see somebody like, oh, well, like, I, I just got accused of steroids recently. I'm like, dude, I'm nowhere near. You, you've you been around me in person. I, I'm nowhere near the stature of a steroid using me. Like, I'm in shape. That's it. Like, I, I've been doing this for, I'm 43, man. I've been working out ha more but, than half of my life. Yeah, but I'm willing to bet that the reason why they, they're so skeptic about your physique is because bottom line, they never think that a vegan could look like you. Exactly. And then, and so instead of actually acknowledging the fact that it could be a plant-based diet and heavy ass weights, right. they, they chalk it up to roids. Yeah, but, it, but the bad part is it's coming from vegans. That's the craziest part. It's like, oh, really? oh yeah. Oh my goodness, man. Oh, this like, happened recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It, like, they, they'll be like, well, veganism is an awesome uh, way to live, but you shouldn't be lying to people that you're not taking this, this, and that. And I'm like, but if somebody's been, I was like, if you honestly dedicated at least a year to working out and eating health, no junk, blah, blah, blah. Have you honestly dedicated at least a year to it? Like the human body is a muscle, just like the brain is a muscle. That's like, if you study math for a year straight, if you don't get better at math, then you were wasting your time. So somebody should look a certain way. I don't even wanna say look better, just look a certain way if they keep training and keep training, it, they're gonna develop that muscle, just like a brain, just yeah. like anything. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's just it's a, it baffles me sometimes that the 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 infighting. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're gonna get it from the outside. That's I saw. I think it was Joe Rogan just made a statement that all all vegan bodybuilders are on steroids. And I was like, first of all, and I had a lot of people hit me up about that. I'm like, first of all, I'm not a bodybuilder. I've never been on stage. I'm just an ex basketball player who's stayed in shape. Okay. No, and it shows, man. You look great. Congratulations. Uh, I haven't stepped foot in the gym in, in so long. You probably want to kick my ass. Probably when we went when we went together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, and I'm not gonna lie. I did go a lot, uh, a lot after that. But uh, yeah, after quarantine, man, I have been so irresponsible. I bought myself these uh, perfect push-up thingy paddles, and I got a 20-pound yeah. dumbbell at home. I'm thinking about joining Nimai for his, uh, you know, his online uh, he's good, man. He's training. He's good. So he's he's definitely uh, doing big things. Um, okay, so we we've, we've spoken off camera so many times, and and I see I see your Instagram feed is is uh, riddled with all sorts of uh, you know ethical and moral standpoints and uh, motivational quotes, and you've been uh, it's been well documented. Let's let's not um, lie to ourselves. It's been well documented that you are a human rights activist before you are a vegan activist, and you've been on record as saying that. Yeah. Um, well, I, I know people don't believe this, but I'm a human. So. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> um, and so I think it begs the question, man. We are going through, I think, one of the most tumultuous um, societal. Uh, dare I say, discrepancies in, in modern history, at least in my generation, you're 43, I just turned 37. Um, we've never seen anything quite like it. Um, this rioting, the bigotry, the, the, 
uh, homophobia, the sexism, you know, feminism is taking shape. So there are so many things, John, uh, that you and I are living as Americans. And uh, I, I wanted to touch base because I think that's it's very important to discuss. Um, what do you what do you do? What do you do when you wake up to another, uh, you know, black man being shot? What do you do when you wake up to another uh, woman that's been raped in a and you know in broad daylight? What do you do when you know we ignore uh, activists getting run over by a truck because they're simply trying to uh, exercise their right to defend life? Like, what what is your train of thought in you know September 2020 after everything that's going on in the world? Uh, I, I was very blessed to learn of um, there's there's this thing in Buddhism. I'm not Buddhist. I'm not religious at all. But I do believe in if something is positive, then embrace it, you know. Mm-hmm. And there was something about Buddhism. And there's there's a noble truth that's called dukkha. And dukkha means suffering. And in Buddhism, it basically says as long as you understand that there will always be suffering, then you can always be happy. And I think it took me to that point to where I'm not saying I'm ecstatic that any of this is happening, but I also understand that suffering is always going to be a part of life. And, but it's also our responsibility to try to eliminate that as much as possible. So when I see something is wrong, I have to speak up about it. Like if you notice on my page, I, I'm sure people would want me to speak more about certain subjects but I spread it around as much as I can, but I do try to focus on the plight of black and black and brown America. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, that's what it is. Like, you know, I did get a lot of flack back in the day when I said, well, I'm a black man first and and vegans got so upset. I was like, well, when I get pulled over, which has happened before, they never asked me, Hey, are you vegan? They're like, they know they're like black man. (laughs) I'm a black man first. Like it's happened. So, you know, and I think, my mother, my my own mother picked cotton as a kid. My mom's 84 years old. My mom picked cotton as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course she probably got paid two cents a day. She wasn't a slave at the moment. But if somebody wouldn't have spoke up about that happening, where would we be right now? And I believe that's where, that's where we all have to be. I think a lot of times we just want to, you know, shut up and go to the corner and hope it just passes by, but We've been going to the corner for how many years now? And it's not passing by. It's getting better, but getting better is not the best. We're not the best. The best is nobody getting killed for racial hatred. The best is no animals getting killed just because we want to. Not because it's a necessity. Not because we'll die if we don't eat animals just because for some reason humans think that we own the planet and it is our planet and nobody else's. Mm -hmm. You know, if humans were to leave right now, there's actually a Native American proverb. It's like, if if humans were to leave the planet, the the earth would go back to its natural status. Mm -hmm. You know, I always add to that, I'm sure the animals would throw a damn party. You know, if we, like, probably. probably. <laughs> you know, the grass would start growing again. The water would clean up. You know, is is interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, I'm definitely with you. Um, you and I usually share the same train of thought. You know, we're both minorities. We we both deal with a lot of bullshit that's you know out in the world. Um, it's just sometimes I I, I find the the motivation. Like sometimes I feel like my own soul leaves my body for those five minutes when you wake up and just pushes my actual physical body out of the bed and like, dude, it'll it'll be okay. Just just get your ass up, drink some coffee, put your big boy pants in, and and deal with the shit world that we live in. Because, you know, I, I know that once you leave this house, you're gonna be faced with so many uh, injustices, so many uh, un- dis- uh, disadvantageous uh, scenarios and. It's tough, man, and, and you're no stranger to this. I'm no stranger to this. Uh, we're not biased in, in any uh, unconventional way, and we, we've seen it all, you know? Uh, we're not 69 years old, and we're not 18 either, but we know enough to 
know when you're walking into a uh, you know trouble you're you, you were were it, you yeah understand. I, since i was a kid though like my mom instilled that in me like literally like you can you can do big things you can help people you can change this world and i've always felt that way you know i, I mean one of the reasons why i never changed my name from john lewis is because of representative john lewis once i was going to change my name probably like 15, 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, and then a friend, of, uh, a mentor of mine was like, no, you should look into John Lewis and that name has a lot of power. And when I checked it out, that's when I found out about Representative John Lewis. And I was like, wow, like this man has done mm -hmm. a lot. And that that made me actually stick to that name was because of that. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, um, his, uh, his funeral services, I watched in its entirety. I'm actually baffled at the fact that Trump didn't even make it, nor he wanted to. It's just, that's a different story. Let's not go through that. Let's keep this light, okay? Uh, so, so let's uh, go ahead and pivot to something uh, a little happier. I know that you're a dad, right? Yeah. Two beautiful kids, um, and so my question to you would be: How important is it for you as a vegan parent to raise your kids vegan, knowing what you know now? and maybe wishing your parents knew what you know now so that your upbringing could have been, dare I say, maybe a little healthier? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's it's paramount to me raising my kids now. But I also, as crazy as it sounds, I'm glad my mom didn't raise me vegan because I don't think I would be as adamant about it. You know, knowing the difference of how bad I felt beforehand mm -hmm. and how amazing I feel now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have that knowledge. So it, you know, sometimes I do sit back like, man, my addiction to sugar, I wish I didn't have, you know, my mom that could bake this amazing stuff, but uh, you know, I, I you know, it, it happened. You, um, still, you still struggle with it? Oh yeah, I, I'm a sugar addict. Like I, I, well, and I kind of break it down in the movie as well, but I, I think I told you, you know, one time we were together, like, so my mom, my my grandmother adopted me. So my grandmother actually raised me. So when I say my mom's 84, that's really my grandmother, but I've never called her mom because I just didn't want to disrespect her. She did so much for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, the term crack baby, I'm a I'm literally a crack baby. Like my my real mother was addicted to crack, her daughter. So I have this very addictive personality, like or addictive qualities that like sometimes I have to have these long hard talks with myself like you're not gonna do this you're not gonna do that you're not gonna do this and that's why when you know even to go back to the steroids thing like i that's one thing i've always been scared to do because i'm like i'm i have such an addictive personality there's no telling where that would lead to okay. um, that's why i haven't done it you know myself but you know again back to the actual question at hand is i just believe that it was divine intervention that it happened this way you know, I was a butcher at one point in my life. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so, a lot of so, people watching this video probably don't, but I actually, yeah, I knew yeah, that. Yeah. So like, you know, if that would have been the case, would I have the knowledge to talk to somebody about knowing about more about the meat industry? You know, me being 315 pounds as a freshman in high school, that gives me more leverage to talk to somebody that's dealing with weight issues. So I believe that like, I needed to go through that to have more of a story to share with people. Cause I know I'm not the only one going through it, mm -hmm. but it, it also, I also know it's kind of hypocritical when a lot of people try to, you know, Hey, you shouldn't do this. And they're like, well, Oh, well, how did you get over it? And they're like, no, I've never been through that myself, but <laughs> you know, I could tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. it. It means more when you've been through the same thing that you're of the person you're trying to help. Right. No, and and I I agree as well. Um, you know, are are your kids like uh, are they are they like appreciative of uh, you know the vegan food and they don't give you any trouble? They have no Not food. All they've ever had is vegan food, so they don't. There, there's yeah. nothing to even fight or argue about. You know, like right. I, I I do deal with parents that you know want to transition their kids and stuff like that, and I tell them like, look, before I give you this advice, I will admit my kids have never had anything but. But with that being said, I've dealt with a lot of parents to where when it was time to switch, you just switch. You know, you don't make a big deal about it. You don't announce everything is vegan. 
And at the end of the day, you're the parent, you're the protector. Mm -hmm. So you didn't ask your kid to give the meat, you just gave it to them. You're the one buying the food. If you truly think something is poisonous to your kid and you continue to give it, to me, that's a sign of child abuse. I was hoping you would say that. I I was hoping I wasn't alone on the matter. I've always I've always thought that to myself, but I've actually been scared to post something like that along social media because I would I would get so many uh, DMs and so many you know unfollows. But yeah, I'm actually I'm actually very happy that I, I finally heard someone say what I've been thinking for for quite some time. Because if you've got it is what in the pudding, and then you continue to consciously feed your kids, uh, you know, um, cancer causing foods or and, and foods that have been linked to cancer, you know, that's kind of making me think twice about what you're actually doing with your kids. I mean, if you know better, you're going to do better. I mean, ha have you gotten the stink eye from vegan, uh, from non-vegan parents when they come across information that you are a vegan parent? No, I think one of the biggest things is that there's a lot of things. Luckily, doing this for so long, I've adjusted my my way of doing things too. I was a big militant vegan when I first came into the game. You know, I was all about you need to be vegan. If you're not vegan, go to hell. I don't even want to talk to you. Like that was my thing. And then I had a real good friend that who's not vegan to this day, but he he told me he's like, hey, bro. He's like, I know you, I know you mean well, but your message isn't coming off. And I'm like, no, man, it doesn't matter. Like they need to know that. He's like, yeah, but you're not reaching them. And I was like, oh man, I didn't think about that. He was like, well, just imagine if you, if somebody came to you that way, cause he knows me. He's like, if somebody came to you that way, would you listen to him? I'm like, yeah, probably not. So I believe that as important as the actual information is the delivery has to be just as important. So I believe in like, that's the way I say it is like, well, when I'm talking to a parent, it's like, well, you love your kid, right? Yeah, okay, well then, if you love your kid and you know that's poison, if you give that to them, how much of a parent are you? And it's, it's the way you deliver it. Now, if I'm like, you're a horrible fucking parent, if you keep giving it to them, that they're gonna be like, yo, dude, like back off. Yeah. Uh, a good, this is one time I had a delivery to somebody personally. She had met, it was, a, it was an event in, it's so, you know how much I travel, man. So yeah, I, no, no, I know, I know. Whatever event it is, there's no disrespect. I'm sorry, and, and I apologize to the lady. But she came up to me afterwards. It was actually um, Charlotte. It was Charlotte Veg Fest, North Carolina. Okay. And the lady came up to me, and she was like, I heard the speech. She was like, thank you so much. You you like, you like, you, you just changed my way of thinking. She's like, I'm just, I'm struggling with that conversion to just go 100% vegan. I was like, okay. And she was like, you know, I have my kids. She said, I've had cancer three times. She said, I had it, you know, and I've been through chemo uh, the, the previous two times. And I'm like, man, you are strong. Like, I'm like, you are strong to go through that. And she's like, and every time, they, you know, they want me to eat meat to build up my immune system and this and that. And I'm like, okay, so if you've been through it twice and it came back again and you're doing exactly what the doctors are saying, but you're scared to go into the vegan route because you don't you don't have the unknown. I was like, well, how painful was the chemo and how painful was it eating all that meat and everything else? She was like, really painful. And she was like, and the thing is, I have I have two kids and it just it it just really I don't want to leave my kids. And it, it was getting to a real like heartfelt conversation. Yeah. And it got to the point where I said one thing, and that's and it, when I said it, it just a light bulb went in her head. Now we had a crying session. I'm not gonna lie, we you know she started crying, I started crying. It happened. But what what I said to make her cry was I said, okay, you talk, you say you got your kids, and you say you had it twice already, and you said you had to go through chemo, and you don't know if you can go through this anymore, and you would hate to leave your kids. I said, well, have you had you know? Um, have you made a decision yet? She said, what decision? I said, have you decided who you want to leave your kids with? And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, if you don't want to change and you know that if you don't change, most likely you're not going to be here. Who do you want to leave your kids with? And her face 
Holy shit. Yeah, that was, and I like, but it, yeah, it had. Hard. I can't imagine her. Holy crap. But the thing is, though, I had to build that rapport with her through the conversation to say that. Yeah. You know, like, like sometimes let's see vegans online. Well, well, fuck them. Let them all get cancer. And then they're like, well, why don't you go vegan? You're like, dude, you just told them fuck them like five seconds ago. Why would they listen to you? No, that's actually that's actually a very good point. Yeah, I, I don't think it would have had the same effect had you not worked your way up to it or, or given exactly. yourself the ability to be able to say that. Because exactly. if you go from zero to 60 and you say that, <laughs> she would have punched your lights out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that, <laughs> but, but listen, y'all, yeah, it got me too. Like, and, and, and before I even said it, I was like, are you gonna say this? I was like, I gotta say it. I was like, I gotta say it. But I had to say it in a in a nice way, you know? And it's not easy to say that in a nice way, but I had to make sure that she could understand that. And when I said that, it, it stuck. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we, that, and that's what we need to do. We need to meet these people where they are and deliver the message to them so they understand. And, and remember that we weren't always vegan. I only know, I think two to three people that have been vegan their whole life. Well, two more because of my kids. Other than that, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know many people that have been vegan since birth. Yeah. Um, so, man, it's crazy. It's almost like I sent you these questions beforehand. And let the record state I did not, but you're making the most absolutely perfect transition into my, my next question. So, admittedly, and I'm putting myself out there, I joined TikTok, bro. Have you joined TikTok? Oh I my joined God. it, and all I did was put up my uh, my trailer. Movie, man. So I, I joined TikTok, and I caved, dude. And it's like it's that thing is so addictive. But I use it in in, in an activist fashion, right? And so you're you're talking about you know how how everybody is not vegan, and and people lose sight of that fact that you know 99% of the, this community transitioned into veganism. I think that's fair to say. Maybe the statistics are not in my favor, but a large chunk of this community transitioned, right? And so TikTok is um, also a great platform on which to do activism. Right now, their algorithms are, are set in a way where it's like better, better for the user as opposed to the platform. You know how Instagram sometimes yeah. shadow bans you. Anyway, point I'm trying to make I'm is- I'm a fan right now, actually, so. Yeah, me too. Hi, join the club. Um, so so the point I'm trying to make is that TikTok is a great platform right now for activists like, you know, Hudson's all on that. You know, Hudson Tarlow, he's a young kid. He's actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so his he's kicking ass. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there as Tabitha well. Brown. Look what Tabitha Brown did. Just Tabitha Brown. Did you see yeah, what yeah, she yeah. did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had like two million followers in like less than a month. Nothing. Like it it's ridiculous. Yeah. So it's it's very user friendly and it's. Uh, it's a great way to do activism. And I get sometimes at the same time, it's the most deflating, it's the most uh, disheartening platform on which to be because you have so much growth compared to so much hate and so much willful ignorance. So yeah. my question to you is, what is the stupidest fucking reason? <laughs> Like people, people come at you with the stupidest, like they'll, they'll write the stupidest comments on your vegan posts. I'm like, <laughs> like, did your brain actually even, tell your mouth to, to type that? I want to go with the stupidest, I'll go with the most recent. The okay, most recent, go ahead, have at it. The most recent was today with the post about the YMCA, you know, and the 1942 pamphlet to come, you know, hit black people <laughs> with the baseball. Uh, and this guy was like, well, I don't see any live photos of it. And I'm like, it's actually documented from a museum. This pamphlet is a real pamphlet. Yeah, but they don't show any, they don't show them hitting actual black people. I'm like, so you need to see pictures of it? So you're not saying that it didn't happen, but because they don't show actual pictures in the pamphlet of them beating black people, you're saying that it's not real. He's like, yeah, I'm not saying it's not real. I'm just saying that the, va the the validity of the story. I'm like, wait, so you're saying the pamphlet's real? And he just started going into some whole. That's why I say mental mental health is so overlooked, man. It it's is. so overlooked. It is. Yeah. It I is. Had this one, oh, another one. I'm sorry. On the same post, this guy said that the problem is in the same post. Said the pro you know what? Let me read it word for word because when he said it, I was go like, for it. "Go for it, yeah, yeah." I was like, yeah. "Wait, what?" Like, like, 
Cause he, he he basically called me like a rich globalist or something. I was like, wait, first of all, you think I'm rich? I was like, that's that's cool. He's okay, here it is. He goes, I wish people would grow up and realize that color keeps us divided and distracted from the real privilege, and that's money. Whoever got money has privilege. Doesn't matter the color. We need to come together and fight the few ultra rich globalists who own everything like you. I was like, wait. really? So my response was, wait, you think I'm a rich globalist that owns everything? Like he, the funny thing, a lot of people went at him on my post, but he never answered me though. Like, I was like, I just want to know like, yeah, and he you won't think I'm this rich globalist. Yeah. And he won't. I, yeah. I yeah. Mean, they're your followers are obviously going to defend you oh. here to kingdom come. So, I mean, he's no, he knows he jumped into a battle. He can't win and he just might yeah. fail. And I, I, I hate to call them followers. I hate to call people. Followers. I always say my tribe and I, I'd say my that. tribe, my tribe is like white blood cells with something wrong comes into the body. Like, it, like right. if somebody says the wrong thing, the white blood cells just come and attack. Like, it's just like, you know what? Let me just sit back, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 no. But you know what? At, at least that guy brings some sort of intellectual factor into the equation, albeit, you know, not the best, but at least he's like touching base on things here and there. You should see the comments I get on my TikTok, brother. I'm talking about like, like I'll post something along the lines of uh, facts about uh, global warming. I touched a little bit on that. Um, actual factory farming. I'll post facts about that. I went at it with two two female farmers from uh, from uh, Nova Scotia the other day. I actually had to make a YouTube video because they gave me so much content to work with. But I'm telling you, that what what you experience pales in comparison of stupidity with what I see on an everyday basis on TikTok. I'm talking about like you'll post facts about far factory farming and how billions of animals are uh, die consciously and and uh, intentionally. And they'll turn around and say, oh, yeah, but what about the, the seven raccoons that have been uh, unfortunately uh, killed uh, as a result of wandering into a farm, you hypocrite? And I'm like, the fuck did I just read, dude? What? Are you seriously comparing a There's billion a land animals dying each year to seven raccoons in Iowa? Like, yeah. what? They'll, they'll, we, they'll also we give want the raccoons to die. We don't, we don't want anybody to die, but the, the goal of veganism is to do the best you can to not harm anything. Exactly. And that's what I always say. Yeah. Hey, but how many times a year? I'm yeah. sure, I hate to admit it, but I'm sure some bird has flown into an engine, something's happened. Like, <laughs> we don't want it to, but the thing hey. is to prevent as much as you can. Exactly. It's like, well, if I, can't, if I can't keep from killing one animal, fuck it, let's kill a billion. Like. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's actually the line of thinking that on TikTok. I'm dead serious. They have this misconception that veganism is is holier than thou. It's superior. It's like close to perfection. And it's not. It's all about creating the least amount of harm. Check this other one out. They're like, oh, OK, you say you're all about the animals. Did you know that the LCD uh, screen on your computer has gelatin, which is made from the uh, boiling of, of, of dead bones from animals? You hypocrite. And I'm like, what like they're, they're taking out the leather seats of a 1994 vehicle i used to own way before i even discovered veganism they're taking that stuff out against you and and thinking themselves that they are intellectually superior because they can call you out on the dumbest shit. it's you, like and, and my biggest thing too and you you see my page where i'm just to the point of if it's a if it's actual dialect and we're actually having a conversation yeah. we'll talk Mm -hmm. But it's, if it if it just gets like just yeah. out of bounds, if if it's anything derogatory, like or mean or I don't I don't mind mean, but name calling and all that shit, I just block them. I don't, like and I tell them like I, I warn them before it even happens. Like yeah. I will block. Them. Yeah, I will do the same thing. And so that's actually and again great transition. Last uh, I I know that we're in quarantine, right? We're not going anywhere for a while. I miss doing street activism and just talking to strangers and, you know, recording. And that's kind of like the way I like to do activism. But you and I are confined to doing Zoom meetings, right? And so it's very important that when we do online activism, whether it's human rights, uh, climate change, you know, activism, it's very important that 
we learn to pick our battles. And that's something that I've been learning to polish my skill set doing on TikTok because I, I can't I can't engage these idiots and be 15, 20, maybe half an hour engaging them in conversation, knowing I'm not going to get anywhere as opposed to maybe come across a comment uh, like it's a buying question. Like, how long have you been vegan? That's a buying question. Yeah. Like, you know, um, uh, what are what are some of the vegan options that I can substitute my meat with? That's a buying question. Whereas a fuck off question, it's like, oh yeah, then you know they'll, they'll make it up on the fly. They're that creative. So last question, and I'll let you go. What are some of the uh, the battles or the signs that you know for a fact you could actually have an open ended, intellectually stimulating conversation with somebody as opposed to maybe a contentious debate? Like, what are the signs for you? The signs for me are usually, it's just the tone of the actual uh, person. And a lot of times I can tell by the, by the username and the avatar that they have, mm -hmm. whether this is going to go way left or way right, like, you know, or just, just going to plummet and just hit and explode. Like I, you can really tell a lot of times it's when people, I, this is a good one. You can tell when it's gonna go all the way sour is when they try to tell you about yourself instead of asking a question. Yeah, but you did this. You already know right then and there they got their opinion made up about you and they're they're, they're trying to dismantle who you are mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, you know, well, what made you go vegan? All right, that's a good question. Like you said, buy a question as opposed to well, you're vegan because you think you're better than everybody. You see what I'm saying? Like when they try to tell you who you are, you already know this shit's gonna go way, way bad. Like, yeah. and and I I have a good a good tactic too. Like when I have some time, I'll debate with some people. But when people come to me with like you know the stupid stuff, I mm -hmm. I have like probably a good set of five emojis I use now. It's usually like hard eyes or the kissy face or the big eyes or just i respond in emojis now like i just like but the kissy face is the one that really pisses them off because it's like well I'm, I'm trying to trying to get mad at you and i'm like yeah you can be mad all you want like another uh like saying that i live by is that energy cannot be destroyed or created it can only be transferred from one entity to the next and when people come to you with that badass energy they want to dump it off on you. They want to give it to you. But if you don't take it, they don't know what to do with that. Like you ever notice that if a troll, and it's happened to all of us, if a troll actually gets to you, or if you watch a page where a troll actually gets to somebody, that troll, you can tell how much fun they're having fucking with that person. Mm -hmm. But if you ever notice that if the person doesn't bite the troll, the troll gets even more pissed. They're like, wait a minute, why aren't you in, why aren't you in, engaging in this? I need to dump this negative energy off on somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not taking it. Like, I'm not taking that negative energy. You can go all you want. You can go, you can say what you want. Yeah. And I, if I you will, say the I thing, will Yeah, I will literally do just that. I make sure I don't feed them what they want to eat. Right. As opposed to, I, okay. I tell them, listen, man, either you engage me in an intellectual conversation and we can talk about this or adults or I will either block you or just not engage you. Oh, at least you literally give them that. say that literally. At least you give them that. What I do is I have a thing now where I, if somebody does do some insulting, I leave it up for a good 24 hours just so I can see who all likes the fucking post that they said so I can block them too. Like, <laughs> That's smart. That's actually smart. I, I was thinking you would say, that, that that your tribe would would hop hop all over that and maybe oh, go, go to town on them. They but do. That's actually, a good idea as well. Yeah. Yeah, because that way I get to weed out more. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let me leave this up for about twenty four hours. And it, the thing is, they even give themselves even a worse situation because they keep going. They keep getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even saying anything at this point. I'm just letting them go. And I keep seeing who likes their comments. I'm like, oh, thank you. Like I got a post coming up probably this week or next week that basically says, are you racist? We are at a point where we can't be on the fence. I need to know where you stand. It's a yes or no question. If you say no, but congratulations, you're a racist. You cannot be 
half racist. You cannot be a you cannot be a, a non-racist but have racist actions. Mm -hmm. It's a yes or no question. And I know when I post this, it's gonna be so many people that are gonna go no, but <laughs> like their ego can't hold it. So I can't wait to post that. And I'm sure it's gonna get a lot of hate too. But it's, uh, it's, it's all good. Sometimes uh, the, the tough conversations are the ones that need to be had. Let's yeah. put it that way. And yeah. it, so if you think it's gonna go sideways and if you think it's gonna rub people the wrong way, I think it's a conversation that, that needs to be had. And I mean, right. if, if 2020 is, uh, is a, a sign of that, if, if anything is, is a sign of that, then, then yeah, look no further than 2020. That's what I meant to say. Exactly. Um, so John, man, listen, I know you're a busy dude. You gotta get back with the kids, go get some yeah, food. Actually, I know you eat once a day, so I'm not even gonna, you know, say you're gonna go have dinner or anything like that. No, I'm going to go have yeah, dinner because you're eat, crazy. Because you're crazy, only eating once a day. You're crazy. Anyway, um, man, I, I can't thank you enough for having to sit down with me. I'll uh, I'll make sure that uh, I make it all uh, nice and pretty so they can repost this and, and share with our audience. I need as much help as I can get, man. <laughs> before uh, before we let you go, um, I. Do you guys have a, a set date for the film or is it is there a tentative uh plug yourself in man what's your uh, social media youtube channel if any let us know man uh, anybody that's got questions for me they can find me at badass vegan you can email me john at badassvegan.com uh the film we still working on the actual release date we um we're finishing up some documentation with the executive producers so that's going to help out and then we still have some filming to do like i said we want to submit to sundance by october 2nd but that doesn't mean that's the final cut of the movie we just need a, a an awesome cut to give to them and then you know it, it looks like it might be a bidding war for it i can't promise it that'd be nice if it's a bidding war for it but right. we'll see we'll right. see how it goes well man i i wish you all the best uh you know i'm a fan of your work and, and what you do each and every day whether it, whether it's in and out of this community so I look, I look up to you in many ways. Um, you know, you're one of the people that actually, you know, dragged my ass into veganism, and 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 you're actually one of the profiles that I started following at my first uh, stages. So I commend you for that, and uh, thank you for uh, you know staying uh, uh, right by that phone whenever I, I shoot you a text. I appreciate you very much, and uh, I look forward, man. I look forward to uh, years to come of uh, uh, more friendship and just uh, kicking ass together. So. I appreciate you sitting down, man. I hope you stay well, stay safe. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll see you around, man. Same here, bro. Much love, right. man. See you. Take care. All right, later.